Good evening, Twelves. My name is Kadian Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. I've written Economies Grade 12, Grade 11, and Grade 10, and I published Business Studies Grade 11 and 12. And my books, the complete versions 250, the No Answers version 200, and I have other things that I give out for free. You can get them if you want them in PDF format. Right, uh, to get into today's lesson, today we're going to talk about what happens in the long run under a perfect market. Now, a perfectly competitive firm is a firm that competes in an industry where there are many buyers and sellers, and those buyers and sellers are selling a homogeneous product. A homogeneous product is something that is identical. A good example would be maize. Maize on its own is homogeneous. Now, uh, you won't find an, a farmer that tries to distinguish his maize, maybe make his maize purple, make it blue. Uh, that's not really something that can happen because maize is nature. It's homogeneous. Now, we have different grades. Yes, we know we can have a big comb of maize and, you know, and so yes we can grade it but at the end of the day we say maize is homogeneous now what comes after that the processing that's now a totally different industry when farmers when when people buy uh milli mill they process it into milli uh, they buy sorry they buy maize and then process it into milli mill through grinding now that's something else yes there they can d distinguish it and uh you know process it better, make it whiter, you know, that is now monopolistic. Because in that case, we see that now products have been differentiated, I would say. And still, there can be still many people doing it, but now the way they do it, the way they process the maize becomes differentiated. Milk is another example. It is homogeneous from the cow. Yes, we may have different breeds of cattle, but uh, when milk is milked, it, we would say it's homogeneous. But now, they can now process it into something different. Clover can do it different from how another brand does it. But when it comes to perfect market, the products are homogeneous, identical. Right, now, in the long run, what happens? That's what we are explaining in this video, okay? So let's jump into today's lesson. Now, we, as a start, you see I have a demand, uh, a demand curve that's downward sloping and a supply curve that's upward sloping. Now, I, di I did this to show you where it all begins. Now, many of us know that the demand curve in a perfectly competitive market is horizontal. However, we have, I have drawn a demand curve that's downward sloping. It's not like I'm contradicting, it's not like I'm making something up, but uh, this basically is the demand curve for the entire industry. So the demand curve for the industry is not the same as the demand curve for the individual. That which we say is horizontal is for the individual producer. This one that I drew here is for the industry, for the entire industry. But yes, we want to show you how the individual will make normal profit in the long run, okay? So now, this being uh, our market forces and everything, let me read what you see here. We have forces of demand and supply causing the price to be 10 rent and causing the quantity to be 1,000. Now, this 1,000 means all the firms in this industry are producing 1,000 units, okay? Now, how can this be transferred to an individual producer? Okay, now if we have an individual, let us assume that this is what's happening in the short run. And what's happening here is this. The individual, this is the individual, this is the industry. The individual is taking this price of 10 from the industry. Okay, you see? It's taking this price of 10 from the industry and as you can see he is selling the product for 10 rand as well okay now when we look at this person's uh, uh, cost curves we realize that this the the cost is higher than the revenue 
So this firm is making an economic loss of uh, five rand per unit, if you want to calculate. And the total economic loss, we then say five times 10, which is 50 rands. Okay, I think that's clear. And I explained these graphs. That's why I just put it there so that, yes, I don't waste time on that. Okay, that's not today's lesson. Now, we want to see then, or we want to discuss, and I want you also to help, but of course you cannot give a direct input. But I want you to think as we go through the lesson, that will help you understand what's going on. Okay, now, what do you think would happen if a firm is making an economic loss? And let, let me not say a firm. If firms in this industry are making an economic loss um, and it being probably caused by the price that forces of demand and supply uh, are intersecting and they are intersecting at 10 rand as you can see now assuming that that's the case what do you think would happen to firms in this industry and and what do you think would happen to um, other firms which are not in this industry do you think they would want to join this industry if it's a maize industry do you think they'll want to join and make economic loss like existing firms or you think existing firms in this industry are going to shut down and exit now them shutting down and exiting the industry it will be pro it will be mainly them applying the shutdown rule and we said a firm should consider shutting down if its average revenue is less or equal to its average variable cost. Now, if that's the case, any firm in this industry that cannot cover its variable costs is going to be forced to shut down, like it will shut down in the long run. And if firms in this industry are shutting down, what do you think is going to be affected in the industry? Well, common sense. Do you think that will affect demand? Well, demand comes from consumers and firms are shutting down or, or if or firms are making economic loss, price is 10, nothing will really cause the demand curve to change because, well, the price is 10, it's a normal day, you know, but something is going to happen to suppliers because suppliers are going to feel the pain and they start to shut down because they're making economic loss and the ones that shut down are the ones that are failing to cover their variable costs. So those firms shut down, what happens? So clearly I'm trying to make you realize that the supply curve is the one that will shift. So we have our supply curve that is going to shift to the left. It shifting to the left means that supply is decreasing. And supply decreases because firms are shutting down. So there are less firms supplying the products, less firms supplying maize. So if that happens, we have a new point of equilibrium and I have that E in red. And as you can see, we have price going up from 10 to 15 and then we have quantity dropping and quantity for the entire industry. So there's less uh, maize on the market so obviously price is going to go up because now the supply curve shifts to the left causing the price to go up and quantity going down now firms in a, in this market structure what are they they are price takers so if the market price changes as in if the price goes up and it's going up because of what because firms are shutting down and supply has decreased. So if that happens, you see that one firm cannot influence the market, but more firms, as more firms exit the industry, supply declines because firms are shutting down. So now there is less supply of that particular product, then price is going to go up. If price goes up, what happens to the existing firms, the ones that did not exit? Those firms will take the new market price. And in this case, the new market price is 15. So what would, do you think will happen in the long run? Obviously, the firms would then take that new market price. And do you see that the new market price being 15, this firm is now making what? A normal profit in the long run. Okay, I hope that's not too much. 
Now I want to show you then what do you, what then would happen if uh, we had a different scenario because here my scenario was uh, an economic loss. So what if a firm is making something different? So I'm going to give you um, another demand curve for the industry, just the way I started there. I'm going to start the same. Okay. So now in this case, if you see, if you look here, we have price being uh, ten and then quantity 800. How does that translate to the individual? Well, the individual takes the same price of 10 rands, as you can see, this price of 10, and then this individual is actually making the opposite of this, which is an economic profit. So what happens to this economic profit? Well, it does the opposite of what happened to the economic loss. The economic loss caused firms to shut down and exit the industry. Now, the economic loss will attract firms into the industry. You see that? The opposite would happen. And is there anything blocking new firms from entering this industry? Nothing. Remember, there are no barriers to entry in a perfectly competitive market. So that being the case, um, the new firms would enter. And uh, demand will not be affected because here we are talking about firms, suppliers of a product, because demand comes from the consumers. So what's happening here is being is, is supply related. So firms will become more in the sense that the economic profit will attract new firms into the industry. And when those new firms enter, you know that supply is going to increase. And supply increasing will cause the price to drop from 10 to 5 and causing quantity to increase. Now there is more firms supplying the product. Now, what do you think the new firm is going to adopt? The new firm will obviously adopt the new market price of 5 rent. Common sense. Why? Because the firm is a price taker. And, and who determines the price? The industry. Okay, so we're going to have a situation like this. The new, the new market price being five, the firm takes it. So uh, to recap, we have uh, this scenario of uh, 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 economic loss causing firms to exit. And then when they exit, supply decreases, which, is, uh, which causes the price to increase. And then firms take the new, market, the new higher market price. Then the next, the opposite of that is we have a situation where, um, uh, what, if, if firms take the, the market price of 10 and they are making an economic profit, which is the opposite of an economic loss. And this economic pro profit attracts as opposed to chasing firms away. This one attracts firms into the industry and then that will cause supply to shift to the right. In other words, it will cause an increase in supply. And when supply increases, we know price decreases. Yes, so the relationship between supply and price is an inverse relationship. And the relationship between um, uh, demand and price is a, a what? We, we call it a what relationship, by the way. Okay, so we have firms taking the new market price of five and then making a normal profit okay i think it's clear as that abc right thank you so much uh, uh I, as always subscribe to the youtube channel thank you it's growing and i really really appreciate uh it started as you know just something that i did during lockdown and uh now it has become you know a big thing and i really really want to appreciate our subscribers we are almost at 10,000 subscribers and I apologize for not posting for a very long time I'm back and I promise I'm not going to disappear like I did thank you so much everyone and God bless